Hello, hello! Welcome to Club Crusette! I am your host, Crusette, and welcome back to the letter. So when we last left off, we had some lunch with a friend of ours. With Well, actually, two friends of ours. And we had quite a spooking on the way back home, but it's now Sunday, and we're going to go bless the hell out of that house and hopefully drop off the floor plans to Marianne. So without further ado... Let's continue. Morning morning dawns bright and clear the following day. God, it's, I just started. I'm already messing up. Although the air still f feels muggy and I miss the chilly autumn weather, it's one of those rare weekends when I'm up even before my alarm rings. If it wasn't for Zach's call last night, I'd probably sleep in. She's excited then. When 9 a.m. rolls around, I'm... Already on my way to the Ermengarde mansion. To think that I'd have to go back again, I'd be lying to say if I was excited. I don't have to anymore. Rose happily gave me paperwork duty when I volunteered. We're on the last phase of the sale, too. Well, almost. Papers to sign, documents to finalize, various other legalities to settle with, with the correct owner, and all that still... Never mind that the new owners want everything done within the week, when the process typically takes more than that. When they want it, they want it done, we'll get it done. I really, really don't understand rich people. But money can do wonders. I won't be surprised if they'll be able to push the process just a little more like what they did to secure the house. The point is, I'm under no obligation to return to the house anymore, but you gotta go back to bless it. Running, running is an option, of course. I can now move on to another property and forget everything. However, at the end of the day, it's always my conscience that wins. What if something happens to those who have seen the letter? Zach, Ash, Becca, Miss McCollin, and the right. The guilt will follow me to my grave. The mansion looms as we approach. Whispers welcoming me, shadows calling. I hope this is the last time. Oh, <laughs> it's, he's not quite Joseph, but I mean, I, I guess he looks like a useful uh, priest of sorts. They are engaged in quiet conversation when I find them in the mansion's front garden. But even with familiar company, it's impossible to feel at ease here. No matter who I'm with, the feeling of being watched is there. Like the very place itself is aware of its trespassers. That's how I feel whenever I go into a church, man. It's like Jesus is watching. <laughs> Zach, on the other hand, doesn't seem to notice. Or he simply doesn't care. Or he's already used to it. I could never tell with him. Sometimes, sometimes, he's almost as hard to read as Ash. Almost. At least Zack doesn't ask for much patience as dealing with Ash does. And that says plenty about him. Miracle of miracles, how the two of them ended up being the best of friends. He waves at me as I approach. True to his promise, Zack has already brought his friend with him. Father Norman. Somehow, I expected him to look older. Oh, don't be surprised. They say people who have found their calling are getting younger these days. <laughs> sorry Father. I didn't mean to say that out loud. No offense taken. Though, I admit I'm a bit surprised. I didn't think someone would ask this house to be blessed after all these years. <laughs> You've heard of it, Father? I mean, of course. In passing, the occasional rumors and talk by the locals, nothing new. You don't spend years serving the church here without hearing a random hearsay here and there. You never mentioned what you thought of those, Father. Ah, but he who goes down to the grave does not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor shall his place know him any more. But what I saw... May not be what you think. It depends entirely on what you mean by it. If you're talking about spirit beings, angels, demons, then yes. Are we talking about the spirits of people who have departed? The word makes it clear that once the deceased has left us, they are gone. Ah. <laughs> but of course, I didn't come here to bore you with a lecture. 
No, it was enlightening, Father. Thank you. Just remember that a god who loves his children would never let them linger once the time comes. That's what my papa often tells me. Your father must be a good man. He raised you well, no doubt. Well then, shall we? Regardless of what it is, I'm sure the mansion's new owners would appreciate such sincere intentions. From a stranger, no less. He let Zack and I walk ahead. A relief. This way he won't see how tightly I'm clutching the straps of, the straps of my bag. Father Norman's probably trying to put me at ease. But the worry, the cold, restless, foreboding feeling has for firmly lodged itself into my stomach, making its presence known with every step it takes towards the house. Hey, you okay? Zack lightly nudges my side, careful, mindful of his motions, trying to avoid startling me. Let's just say this place gives me the creeps. Like, just be real. Why do I keep doing this? Every time I try to open up the relationship thing, I open up the save file. Our relationship with him has improved because we're not lying to him. It's hard to lie when Zack gives you that look. But it's easy for us to lie to Ash on accident, apparently. <laughs> it's just there. That kind... The kind that implores a silent appeal... I'm not sure if he's even doing it consciously. Another breeze blows, and I try not to shiver. Try not to listen to the voice that may or may not be there. Ugh, this place really gives me the creeps. It doesn't seem more than an ordinary house to me, though. I mean, you didn't see what we saw. Damn, I should have brought my camera with me. I saw a few areas that'd be good for a shoot. I kind of wish he did. I wonder what he would actually capture on film, you know, like, if he were to, like, you know, print it and be like, whoa, there's something weird here in this, but that wasn't there when I was looking at this angle, you know, or whatever. You think the new owners will allow it? Maybe. Shh! What if you catch something? Or someone in one of the pictures? <laughs> it just means they want to be seen, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't ask for it. It's not like we can stop them if they do. You're really not helping, Zack. All right, all right, sorry. Don't worry. I don't think whatever's inside this house will do anything. I'm here, yeah? I'll take care of them. Or I think I can. Oh, he's so sweet, man. Not that scary, but thanks. I'll be sure to run behind you if I see one. Ridiculous talk, though the temporary reprieve it lends is more than welcome. He offers me a smile in return, the least he could do. And with a slight motion of his hand, he gestures for us to move ahead while my own fears are left forgotten for the time being. The things inside my bag clatter softly against each other while I rummage for the keys to the mansion. I should have heard the telltale jangle by now, but didn't I put it in my bag last night? Seconds later, I'm sitting on my heels, and one, one after another, I'm taking out everything from every pocket, every slip. It'll be a pain to put everything back later, but I'm sure it's just under these. Nothing. Oh. Oh, man. Of all times to forget. Is something the matter? No, I... I'm sorry, Father. I think I left the key. No use coming up with excuses. And right after they've both taken the time to get this far away from the city. The heavy sigh, I grab the door by the handle to pull myself up. A string of apologies, ready at the tip of my tongue. Careful, Bella! We have spoken with the current owners. Well, technically, you were not yet the owners, but... Um... Rose? There's a brief moment of confusion, and then I'm falling. The momentum of the door swinging open pulls me back, first to the mansion's foyer, before I can get a sense of what's happening. Ow, 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 my back. Poor Isabella, she just spends all her time getting toppled over, you know what I mean? What the? Isabella? I, I knew that was Rose. It was either going to be Rose or Marianne, one or the other. 
No time to nurse my bruised back or make up excuses because the next thing I know, Zack's gently pulling me upright by my arm. Rose looks down at me with a mixture of apprehension and something I couldn't quite place. I take it to relief, but... Ah, sheesh, good thing. Good going, Isabella. Right after you volunteered to work on the papers. It's standing behind her. Ma'am Hannah! Mr. Wright! Oh, Isabel! We always meet in the most... interesting circumstances. She still can't get our name right. A complete understatement, darling. What are they doing in my house? Y'all, this, this isn't y'all's house yet! She opened up the door! Abruptly, he waves his hand at Zack and Father Norman like their presence is a slight against his own. I thought you said you wanted to do paperwork duty. What are you doing here? Like a deer caught in the headlights. Oh no, I wonder if picking uh, Ash's option would have avoided this situation then. Most, most likely. Unfair, Rose. That's putting me on the spot. And it leaves you no other choice but to answer. I, uh, the reason why I'm here? Well, spit it out, Lily. We don't have all day. It's not Lily. I'm just here to make sure everything is fine before you move in. I'm so sorry, Mama. You'll say- You said I'll go to hell if I lie. I likely will after this, but there's no other way. Well, it isn't entirely a lie. I'm here to make sure that no one disturbs them after they move in. It just so happens that what I'm checking for and trying to drive away is a paranormal variety. Oh? Oh shoot, I, I skipped over Luke's line. Oh well, oh well. He's, I, 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 I don't really feel, like, great with Luke yet, but I mean, like, we... In our relationship status, we have the lowest with him and Hannah. Like, even though I feel like we're closer to Hannah. You know what I mean? Like, Luke just seems so distant and attached. Distant. Yeah, detached. Mr. Wright shifts his gaze around in a careful manner as if he's looking for the faults in every crevice of the house. The grin on his face, though, when he returns his attention to me is similar to what my Kuyo Jordan had often given me when he... when he was up to something. Usually a scare prank that inevitably ended in me crying. I never did forget the way my brother sneered at me then. A part of me thinks that perhaps if I hadn't been the object of his mischief in childhood, I would have grown a little braver. <laughs> Come on, little Lily. Lying doesn't do that cute little face any justice. I'm a very patient man. Now, why are you really here? Right now, in the face of an almost identical expression, perhaps even cooler than what I'm used to, the lie I told falls apart. Oh no, actually saving would be a beautiful thing to do right now. The truth, the truth is I was just thinking we could have the house blessed b before move-in day. And why would we ever need to have this house blessed? F for luck? And protection? I shrink under his scrutinizing gaze. For a second, I think that he'll start shouting at me. <laughs> Instead, he laughs. Not the mocking, jeering kind, but one wondering if he's hearing things right. I'd say he was amused, but I honestly couldn't understand what was so funny about what I just said. Was it really that weird? It Wasn't it a custom here? I wish Becca was here to explain stuff like this. That's rich coming from you. When we saw Devlin Court, you didn't. It's a small custom back home. I thought it would be nice to do something that would bring positive energy to the mansion since this place has been empty for years. Ah, haha, very good. This, Isabella? I hope you did those first before this. Of course I did. It's almost done, in fact. But there are some items I still have to double check before finalizing everything. You know I don't sign without a thorough inspection. And well, this is what this is for too. I just thought it would be more efficient to do both at the same time. Here I thought you didn't want to go back. A job is a job, Rose. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. Oh, well if that's the case then go ahead. 
I like Madame Hannah already. Like, she's just like, oh, this seems actually kind of sweet, and if it's a custom, that's fine. I get it. Cultural stuff. No need to be so hard on her, Rosie. I personally think it's a nice touch. I was actually thinking of the same thing, but you beat me to it. Oh, this, this works. Darling, Buttercup, please. You know these things don't work. Ah. Uh. No offense meant to the holy man, of course. That does not explain the <gasps> though. <gasps> oh! All of a sudden, there's an awkward silence that even Rose, of all people, seems reluctant to break. Although, a desire to do so is evident in the way her eyes nervously shift back to Mr. Riot. Meanwhile, Zack's grip on my arm suddenly tightens. He doesn't say anything further, but there's a conflicted look when I glance up. That's the face he makes and he desperately wants to give someone a piece of his mind but chooses not to do so, mostly to avoid confrontation or fanning the flames of an argument. He has always, always been like this. Even amongst his own friends, he chooses to take place since he stands despite holding opinions of his own. Not that I won't say anything. I know Mr. Wright's a client, but you can't just say that in front of other people, in front of Zack, no less. If Ash were here, I know he wouldn't stand for it. And neither do I. There was no re there was a reason why bullies back home never touched my younger brother again after I gave them a taste of their own medicine. He might be a few inches taller than me, but I'm pretty sure I can still hit a land or two. Maybe. If I'm go if I'm not going to get in trouble with BRC for it. Before any punch could be thrown, Van Hanna cuts it. You her. seal Mitchell right. In a firm voice too, demanding his complete silence. What? Instead of answering, she merely crosses her arms and shoots her husband a sharp, disapproving glare. That seems to have done the trick. He immediately shuts his mouth, but not before muttering a few inaudible words under his breath. At this, Van Hannah could only sigh and roll her eyes, more than happy to get back to the top again. I'm sure she knows what she's doing, love. She got us the house, remember? Who knows what a little positive vibe can do? It could even give us what we've been eagerly waiting for all these years. A child? What have we been waiting for? I don't think I was ever informed of. Nothing you should worry about right now. Anyway, we've still got a few things we need to discuss with Rosie here. Over lunch? I hope you don't mind, Isabel. We'd love to take you with us, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead, ma'am. This'll take time. That's why there's two of us working on this. Rose looks like she's about to murder someone. Probably me. At least she won't have to stay in a haunted property. She's getting the better end of this deal, if anyone's asking me. Oh, wonderful. I hope the next time the three of us meet, it'll be over a closed deal, hmm? Of course, ma'am. Please look forward to it. Rose hurriedly hands me the keys to the house before leaving, mouthing reminders to secure the place and harmless threats for throwing her under the bus. I return to it with a reassuring smile of my own, even if she's the one who forgets. Sheesh. And just like that, gone. Just as quickly as they appeared, fleeting from one scene to the next and leaving me wondering if this is simply what's typical for the rich and famous. So I'd rather stay with my rundown apartment or in our little shack back home. There's still joy in the smallest things, after all. With the house this big, it's not surprising when the ceremony takes a few hours to finish. The sun's already high by the time we've gone through the last room. Oh, made this house be blessed. I know at the top it said we had gotten the achievement, but now it's there. Okay, good. I can never say I'm a devout follower of my own faith, even with Mama and Papa's teachings. But hearing everywhere Father Norman uttered as we went around the house has put me at ease. All of a sudden, the mansion doesn't seem so scary anymore. Maybe 
there is an end to this. Or perhaps this is the end. Father Norman bids us goodbye upon exiting the mansion grounds. He has business in the village nearby, he says. A minute gesture to reach out to the members of their parish every once in a while. It reminds me of a distant memory of helping hands and a few kind smiles that helped my family pull through when we were in tough times. But before he leaves... Isabella, a word before I go? Zachary hasn't been really forthcoming with your situation, and it is something I understand it wasn't his to share. But whatever burdens you, know that it's not a permanent fixture in your life. Besides, you have people to bear it with. I bite back the harsh retorts before they come out, masking it with a smile as we wave the good priest off. His words, though they meant comfort, only left a bitter taste in my mouth. And if they don't believe you, what am I to do? A hand lays briefly on my shoulders, taking me out of my thoughts before they can take a sullen turn. But my smile doesn't quite reach my ears when I turn to him. Say, do you want to go somewhere? Do you want to maybe go, go beat up Luke? Right now? Where to? Anywhere in the city. I'll leave it up to you. It wouldn't hurt. I've got some stuff I need to buy. Groceries. And there's a shop I want to check. Is it real food this time? <laughs> Let me guess. Rebecca? She's just worried about you. Even I can't eat that much instant noodles. <laughs> yeah, our relationship with Zach's probably gonna tap out by the end of this chapter, man. We'll see. We're at 38%. Think of it as a talent. Let's just go, Zach. I smile. A real one this time, devoid of any unpleasant thoughts. Regardless of what happened between us the past few days, I don't want to think harshly of them. Zack had me wait on a nearby bench upon arriving, prior to going off somewhere. He hasn't returned since, and it's been a good 20 minutes of being left alone nearly to my own thoughts. In this weather, the park gives off a lazier, more lame Langai to vibe than usual. Where children are usually seen running around and playing, there are now people lying, leaning back on their picnic baskets, simply enjoying the afternoon sun. The smell of the food drifts from a nearby cart, and if the wind blows in the right direction, one would catch the whiff of freshly trimmed glass. Grass, not glass. Freshly trimmed glass sounds absolutely horrible. I'd gladly sleep on this bench if I wasn't waiting for anyone. Soon enough, I see his hulking figure running towards me, carrying a medium-sized box on one hand and casually waving the other at me. He's panting when he reaches my bench. Sweat drips profusely from his forehead, but there's a grin on his face. <laughs> Sorry, the line was really long. Really long. Uh, you didn't have to run. Sit down first. Nah, I, I'm, I'm good. Didn't want to make you wait for these. Is it donuts? I already know it's in the blue box before he opens it. Cinnamon rolls. See, I just guessed. I didn't actually think it was going to be a pastry, though. Cinnamon rolls. All six of them topped with white cream cheese glaze. The very same one I bought after I sold my first property. After I met Zap, Ash, and Becca. Funny how such a small thing could trigger a distant memory, no matter how mundane it is. I don't say no to free food, but why is he getting me these now? What for? He leans on the empty space beside me, wiping the sweat off his forehead before answering. An apology. And his thanks for yesterday and the other day. You don't have to buy me anything, Zach. You were upset. You haven't been yourself recently, and people kind of miss that, you know? Aww. Are you just saying that, or... No, really. Rebecca told me. You know how she is. Ashton, too. Ashton was an ass. He should have been named Ashhole instead. 
He went a little overboard, yeah. Now I can talk to him if you want. He'll still tease me about it, even if it's Rebecca telling him to stop. Besides, I can handle him. You always do. And yesterday, when you talked me through my little slump, I thought, hey, I want our old Isabella back. Are you... Are you still upset? Are you upset about what Luke said? That's what I want to know, Zach. There are times that I wish Zack had been my big brother, or Becca, my older sister. Maybe my life would have been a little easier then. Maybe Papa wouldn't have been as sick as he is. Maybe. Maybe I wouldn't be alone here. But then again, if he is, if they were what I wish them to be, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have met Ash, too. Life back home is tough, but for all that, I... I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change it for one selfish wish. In this city of 68,000 people, I have people I could depend on. Three of them, in fact. When you think about it, when you compare the numbers to the odds of finding someone like them amidst the sea of nameless people, I'm lucky. Thanks a lot for today, Zach. You didn't have to, but you did. I can always count on you. Just me? No Ashton or Rebecca? Oh boy, they won't be happy to hear that. <laughs> I don't mind being the favorite, though. <laughs> nope, no favorites. But you cook better than both of them, so that's a plus. <laughs> it's always been food with you, ain't it? Don't put it like that. You're making me sound like a glutton. Well, you kind of are. I'm not saying you are, but it does feel good to know there's someone I could invite for food to be able to eat all of it. <laughs> Only that? I thought we were also art buddies. Oh, that too. Uh, but the food thing really stands out when you think about it. You do eat a lot for someone your, uh, size. <laughs> blow, blow. I take pride in my height. So, uh, is it okay now? Do you feel better? Does, does it still scare you? A little. I'll be okay. I'll... I'll figure it out, somehow. It's not as bad as the other day, and Father Norman helped too. I should have brought something to thank him. Oh, we could visit him anytime. He loves hearing from the young ones. <laughs> he isn't that old, is he? <laughs> Don't know. He doesn't tell. I think I might have seen his face somewhere before. I just couldn't recall when or where. Ash says he looks like his boss, so the bartender at the local pub if he squints. Don't take his word for it, of course. He might have accidentally inhaled something from the forensic lab again when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> this time, the laughter that comes from both of us is genuine. Back to the usual. Things may have not been the easiest lately, but it certainly isn't the worst that has happened. We do end up sharing the cinnamon buns between us, despite Sack's insistence that it's only for me, but more than the food, there's relief and contentment. If you need anything, just ring, okay? Like when Ash annoys you too much. I'll help you with him, best friend or not. No way. I can take him on. <laughs> Still an extra muscle wouldn't hurt, yeah? Just let me know, and I'll back you up. My sister knows this one thing to shut him up when he's being his usual self. Ask me what it is whenever you want, and I'll spill it. Ooh. I don't think that's necessary, but thanks. I'll keep that in mind. Juicy. <laughs> he leaves me with a smile and a wave. Shoot. Off to some new gig again. As for me, we still need to talk. Becca, Ash, and I put petty arguments aside like the adults we all are. This, however, is a start. No matter how small it may be, I just hope... I just hope I can keep them safe. A light wind blows again, sending dried leaves swirling in the distant smell of the earth into the air. For the first time, the sunlight feels less harsh. Maybe a walk is good. I need to visit the grocery, too. Come to think of it, wasn't there an art store that opened recently near the park? 
Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, so we're probably going to uh, have this peaceful moment absolutely come crashing down on us at any moment now. Let's give this a save. The cat's name is... Okay, let's let, let's try this. The cat's name is... Bruthiel. Bruthiel. Or at least, that's what his collar says. It's an odd name to give a cat, in my opinion. But it speaks grace, much like the one that carries it. It shows, in a way, as he swishes his tail and his eyes follow by hands every movement. I'm not sure what he finds fascinating in me, to be honest. I wasn't the very picture of Grace when he found me, after all. It was a bad idea, carrying two heavy bags of newly bought art supplies and groceries without any help or a sure ride home. In hindsight, perhaps I shouldn't have bought all of these at the same time. I didn't even make it past the park. And now I'm suffering underneath the glaring afternoon sun, hunched up on a park bench and drenched in sweat in the company of a cat curiously watching my every movement. I hope it stays where it is. It's just a black cat. But back home, they're considered ill omens. D don't look at me like that. I can act graceful as well if I want to. But black cats are the best, man. I think so. Not that I've ever acted graceful in my life, of course. Growing up with rowdy younger brothers and a sister does that. Or maybe it's the opposite. Mama used to call me a little troublemaker before. Well, graceful or not, there's no use moping. A short breather and then I'm off home. Besides, it isn't like the company is bad, even if it's a cat. As long as it doesn't bite or crosses my path. Where's your owner, anyway? He has one, doesn't he? An owner? That's what the collar's for, isn't it? A bandage wrapped up on one of its paws, though. I wonder what happened to it. Did he run away? Well, if you don't have one, I won't be able to take you in. My apartment doesn't allow pets. I tried to bring one home before. A cat. Not black, of course. <sighs> and Rebecca threw a fit before the landlady could. I take a small packet of sweets from one of the bags beside me and open it up. As I'm about to put it in my mouth, he meows. My hand stops. Do you want one? He doesn't meow again as I'm expecting him to. But I take his unblinking gaze as a yes. I shift the piece to my palm and hold it out to him warily. He sniffs at it once, twice, before... Borussia. Oh! Like a good, properly trained pet, Ruthiel responds as soon as he's called. Recognition comes as soon as my head snaps in the direction of the voice. Miss McCullough's hard to miss. What with her height. I'm sorry. Did my cat hurt you? Of course not. Miss Santos, was it? I'm surprised to see you here. Nice to meet you again, Miss McCullough. Were you harmed in any way? I'm sorry. Bruce feels not exactly fond of other people. Even run away from the veterinarian right now. Oh no, he was just sniffing my hand earlier. My Bruce feels a she. Oh, my, our apologies. She? All this time I thought the converse, the pause in conversation, if this can be called one, is uncomfortable. We're merely two people working two different jobs for the same client. Frankly, meetings like this don't happen a lot, and if it does, a simple nodding of heads is enough. Um, uh, still trying to be friendly wouldn't hurt. Uh, let's see, how will that? Oh, talking to her about her cat actually decreases our relationship, so let's try that again. Let's talk um, to her about her job. I'm just curious. About... about your work. That improved our relationship. Okay. What about it? There is something guarded in her expression at the mention of work, but I pushed through with my question. I thought talking to her about her cat would be 
great be like, oh, how long have you had it? I, I, I also like, I mean, as a person who likes cats, I like talking to other people about their cats, you know, so. <laughs> I, I just want to know how it is to work on a house like the Ermengarde Mansion. Is it hard? I guess she wasn't expecting a question like that. If the way her eyebrows shot up tells me something. Because of its age? I wouldn't say it is. It is a challenge, considering the factors me and my team have sought out. But it's a good project. A breath of fresh air from what I usually work on. And I have a good team. But if she's passionate about work, then that's also a good topic for her to talk about. You know what I mean? Those original fittings, though. It might be old, but the architecture is magnificent. I'm sure you've seen the stained glass windows in the foyer. Oh, I can already think of so many things I could do with it. It's pronounced foyer. I've been saying foyer this whole time. But of course, my team will have to double check for necessary repairs here and there. That's probably for the best. It's easy to break some key elements with a rush restoration job, and who knows what other hidden issues there might be underneath. People can be so careless. I'm sorry, I spoke too much. Aw, she's flustered. No, it's okay. You seem to really love what you're doing. It's not really like that. I'm just lucky to have found work in an interesting field. Uh, anyway, Bruthiel's due for her visit to the vet. Nice talking to you, Miss Santos. I wish you luck with what you're planning to work on. It seems like a big project, too. She gestures her head towards the back. The ones filled with stuff I've recently brought at the art store. It's a project for a friend, actually. All the same. Good luck. She's like, deuces. You know, after she got to talk about herself, you know. But she seems very thoughtful, you know what I mean? Like, she didn't wish us ill. She probably would have wished us ill if we just decided to talk to her about her cat, though. <laughs> I watch her as she leaves, though she stops shortly before crossing the threshold, separating the park and the street. She faces me again, looking like there's something she's forgotten to say. By the way, about the Irmingard Mansion, with my clients, it's the rights, I mean. Mm -hmm. I hope you don't mind me asking, but has the deal been finalized? There's still a few papers they need, but the house is more or less theirs now. Ah. Uh. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. Wait. I... about the mansion. The, uh... The letter. The same one they saw. Whoever she is, she's asking for help. Someone. I want to tell Miss McCullough that the urban legends aren't just legends anymore. They're real. She's not going to D believe don't me. Don't mind me. I need to go, too. Have a good day, Miss McCullough. I hasten to pick up the bags I've left on the bench and run as far as my legs could take me. In that moment, what I'm carrying in my hands weighs far lighter than the overwhelming guilt trying to consume me. Home. I want to go home. Anywhere where I won't be reminded of the house. Of her. Of my own cowardice. The food tastes less appetizing tonight. Is it because it's still instant noodles? A pity. One would think that someone who had been on a continuous binge of instant noodles would find, home -cooked, would find a home-cooked meal enjoyable, but it isn't. Hunger isn't what is gnawing at me tonight. Neither are my sore muscles. The TV runs loudly in the background, but what it says barely registers in my brain. It's hard when the things you're trying to forget keep returning to the forefront of your mind. Oh girl, I know that one all too well. It distracts you. Eats at you. Devours you. I wish this would stop. I wish I wasn't the one who picked it up. I wish it was somebody else. In other local news, a woman was found dead in her home. I, I hate- okay, so um, it says here, in other news, a woman- in other local news, a woman who was found dead in her home yesterday evening... Lugsborne police officials are currently investigating the crime scene, but has classified the case as homicide. Okay, so so far that line was consistent too. Okay, like that first line just was not consistent with what the woman on TV had said. Huh? The victim, identified as Rose Pamela Cooper, 33 years old, working as a real estate agent. Oh my god! Rose? Discovered lying in a pool of blood in her two-bedroom flat with the words, help me, repeatedly written on the walls. 
Rose! No. No! This isn't... This isn't what I want! This isn't supposed to happen! None of this is supposed to happen! No one's supposed to die! Those are just stories, right? Legends! Oh my god, e even I'm super stunned right now. That's what everyone kept telling me, so why? A and I... Immediately, I rushed to my study table in search of my phone. My hand, cold from dread, clings tight to it as soon as I touch its edges. A piece of folded paper, the letter, lying unassumedly beside it, slips onto the floor when I pick up the device. But I pay no mind to it. There are more important things. Right now, right now, I need to call her. I need to call her. I was with her. I was just with her not long ago, and she was okay. No, no, no. It isn't Rose. I'm, I'm sure of it. Denial. I just talked to her, and a sob escapes me, and hot tears begin to blur my vision. One after another, they trickle down. Weighted by the very same guilt I refuse to admit I've been carrying from the start. Oh my god. The same one I've been hiding from. The same one that has put the people I care about in danger. My hands shake as I navigate to Rose's number on my contacts list. She'll answer, right? That's what she always says. She'll pick up. She'll tell me to turn down the waterworks. Call me a wuss afterwards. She'll answer. Please answer, Rose. Oh, she's so sad. She actually has a crying sp uh, sprite or bottle, whatever you want to call this. Again and again, I dial, whispering, praying, pleading. Come on, Rose. Don't do this to me. Please pick up. I know. I know you're there, Rose. You're not dead. Please tell me you're not. This adds to the series of deaths and disappearances that has plagued Luxborn in the recent years. The authorities are currently looking at a possible link with the notorious Anselm Butcher case. The TV runs loudly in the background. A deafening static sounds from my phone speaker. But in my ear, I can only hear the screams. Her pleas. Her whispers. Help. We are not safe. Buzzing sensation jolts me awake. I'm surprised she got any sleep at all. My body still wants to sleep, to forget what I heard, what I saw last night. But it's there, nudging, prodding at me. Slowly, I become aware of how awkward my position is in the aches that accompany him sleeping in a curled up position the night before. If I slept at all. The memories are impossible to forget now that, now that, now that Rose is gone. They say it's easier when you say it out loud. Instead, the words weigh heavier on me each time. She's gone. Gone because of me. Gone because of one letter I was too curious to look at. I should have been more careful. I should have just kept my mouth shut. I should have destroyed it before anyone else had gotten involved. I should have. The notification light on my laptop blinks incessantly, mockingly. When I look at it, as if it's calling me back to some sense of normalcy. Okay. I check it nevertheless, out of habit more than anything. To all the BRC employees, in light of the recent and events... There will be an all-staff emergency meeting from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Attendance is a mess. Company changes, new hierarchies, and policies will all be discussed during the meeting. Everyone is expected to bring a copy of their own attendance logs and sales reports from the last six months to be submitted to your respective managers for review. We are expecting everyone's cooperation. Thank you, Joanne Alice Schultz. If this were one of those typical days, I'd happily comply and get myself to our office. 
today, today my limbs just feel heavy. On one hand, going will keep me busy, take my mind elsewhere. On the other, the place in itself is a stark reminder of my own fear, what my own fears have cost me. I should just go to work. Moping won't get me anywhere. This isn't just one of those things. This is just one of those things, isn't it? Do you deal with the smile, no matter how bad things get and hope for the best? Although my whole body feels like lead and my limbs are sore, I push myself away from the chair and head for the shower. The letter I dropped on my f on the floor last night flutters open as I pass by it, unfolding for no one else but me to see. Every word written on it glares back at me. They sneer. They ridicule. Like living beings fully aware of what they've done. With the huff, I pick it up and shove it into my bag. Perhaps with the more anger and frustration than what I'm used to showing. This, too, I'll deal with. Somehow, I'll find a way and make things right. I have to. For it takes more people from me, even if I must do it on my own. Papers rustling, telephones ringing, feet shuffling. Overall, today looks like it will be a typical working day at, Bri at BRC. Except it isn't. The air is thick with tension and unspoken questions. No doubt everyone present has already heard about Rose. If they missed last night's news report, they'd likely see it in the morning news, in the papers, or on various news sites on the internet. Everywhere is a bitter reminder. In fact, everyone's giving me a wide breath, as though the mere mention of Rose would be enough to trigger something in me. It's appreciated, but it only serves as a bigger hole in the place that Rose has left. After lunch, my boss calls for a meeting. I don't... I don't have to look up from my work to know what it is about. He's in a strange, pensive mood today, probably out of respect for a dead colleague. Oddly, I appreciate it more if he just shouted at me today. Anything is better. I'm sure you've all heard of what happened to Miss Cooper. She was a valued member of our team and she will be missed. There's no date for a funeral, yet, but those who wish to attend, kindly speak with your respective supervisors. By the way, has anyone heard about our still AWOL staff? None? HR, you know what to do. Santos, a word in my office. At the end of it, I've been given the entirety of Rosa's workload, including finalizing the rights papers, and have been promised an ample compensation for my efforts. I think he's expecting me to be happy about it. Instead, I immerse myself in the work. I have to anyway, if I want to forget. Employee of the month. Time flies when you do, and by the time I have given notice, it's already late. Everyone's already gone, leaving me in the company of a radio and a member of our janitorial staff. We're probably going to be haunted any minute now. I don't even know his name. Rose likely does. She remembers people easily like that. The Lux Bomb Police Department continues its search for the following reported missing people. The, ro the radio blares one name after another. Hold on a second. Missing? Aren't they? Still, I have to check. Frantic, I turn to my desktop. The loud typing of my fingers against the keys fills the office for the better part of my shift as I look through everything. The background about the place, the history of its current owners, and list of employees hired under BRC. And I'm right. Of course I am. BRC may have a lot of staff. They may have a lot of agents hired. But I'd remember those names anywhere. After all, they're part of the crew who worked with us in preparing the mansion for the open house. And the letters? No, that can't be... I hope it's not what I'm thinking. But Rose is... Something snaps into place in the fraction of a moment. Those people, Rose, I the letter... To... No, if it's like this, they still won't believe me. I have to make sure of it first. 
Evidence doesn't lie. That's what Ash often says, right? If I have proof, then maybe... I don't want to get my hopes up yet. But maybe there's still a way I can save them. The letter, my phone, papers, anything that will be useful. I grab all of them and stuff them into my bag. I can't stay here. There's something I need to do. There's something those people should. The noise... The noise cuts sharply through the room, stopping my hands short of cramming a pen into my bag. H Hello? Uh, anyone there? Someone must have left the printer open again. I may be in a hurry, but if I don't turn it off, another person is certainly going to have a fit tomorrow over a waste of company resources. Most of the time, it's Rose who does the nagging, but... Clicking of my pen in my hand is a welcome distraction as I search for the said object. Each stride of my feet takes also echoes throughout the empty workplace. I've lost sight of the janitor minutes ago, and with me being the only person left, the tapping of my feet against the wooden floor is something I soon learn to appreciate. It doesn't take me long to find it. By the time I find it, five pages are already drawn on the ground, the paper tray having been left ajar. Sighing, I pick each of it up to put someplace proper. But the page greets me, but the page that greets me next makes my blood run cold. Oh my god. The chill that makes its way up my spine is as numbing as the day in the attic. The sheets crinkle under my tense grip. All I can hear is my breathing as it rasps through my gritted teeth. But before I can even gather myself, take the first steps out of there, total darkness sudden envelops me. As if hearing every horrid thought inside, as if hearing every horrid thought running inside of my head right now, something snaps. A soft creak grating through the vein, the thin vein of stillness that has descended into the room. Every muscle, every bone in my body goes rigid at the sound. Familiar, so familiar now. Yet my own traitorousness, curiosity, still presses me to take a careful peek over the cubicle's walls. It's her, standing in the only exit of the office, albeit facing away from me. She doesn't even need to turn around for me to know it's the same misshapen face, tattered clothes, and unsighted gait. The same person in the attic. I take a step back, the pin I'm holding slips from my hand, and her entire head turns. A scream almost escapes my mouth, and I duck under the, my table as I quickly can. My heart is pounding hard against my chest. I can hear the bone-chilling sounds of her walk, the weird clicking that follows her tail-tail squish of something wet as she walks towards me, nearer and nearer. The sounds are getting, the sounds are slowly getting louder only thing keeping the whimper from escaping me is my hand as it covers my mouth. Someone please save me. Anyone. I close my eyes, muttering a continuous stream of prayers, all while attempting to steady my own breathing. Please, please don't let her hear me. Use the space bar to stop the pointer at the right time. Oh God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. When the last lines of my prayer have left me, all that remains is a hush. None of her footsteps, nor those chilling sounds she made. Safe? No, it's not going to be safe because I messed up. Another second passes when nothing comes. 
Oh yeah, I should have known. Oh yeah, we're gonna continue. We gotta try that again. Jesus Christ, guys. I did it. Finally. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to do this already. The seconds, minutes stretch out before me agonizingly. Is she gone? Slowly I open my eyes to take a peek. I don't dare move or make a noise. In the face of such terror, I can only beg, let out silent pleas to whoever is out there. Please, please don't let her notice. I... I want to live. What? Wait, wait, wait. Wait. We... We're now at... Hannah's story for some reason. Oh my god. I, I wasn't expecting us to just be thrown into her story when we're in the middle of a cliffhanger at Isabella's. Um, okay then. I think that's what we're gonna call it for now. Definitely. Because this seems like a good place for us to pick off at a, pick up at, at a new chapter with some new faces, with Someone that we, we hardly don't know, you know what I mean? And maybe we can learn more about her her absolutely horrible husband in the next chapter, in the next episode, you know what I mean? Alrighty, everybody, uh, do you, what do you think's gonna happen next? Like, I, I literally don't know, like I said, we were just kind of thrust into this new segment of the game, like, with little warning, you know what I mean? So, do you think it depends on what we do here as Hannah now? That'll determine if Isabella's going to live, or we're just gonna go on down through their stories, and we'll get to like 50% and be thrust into everyone else so they can come back around and finish it up? I, I, I don't know. I legitimately don't know how this is gonna work out. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments down below, though, definitely. Alrighty, everybody. You all have a lovely day and a happy October. And thank you so much for watching my content. It means everything to me. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye!